Just a moment, please. Uh, please let me know if you can hear me, participants. Uh, sorry about the delay. I was in um, another meeting of which I was the secretary, so I couldn't leave. So sorry. I was supposed to have ended before the start of this one. Okay, so thank you for hanging on. This morning, we are going to look at using the Mendeley Reference Manager. So the Mendeley Reference Manager being a software package for research. So this is a package that you can use to take away some of the stress of research. I mean, you can think about finding resources alone to work, sitting down to crack your brain to find the facts being coherent and ensuring that you are also following and working within the bounds of research methodology. If you have to also add all this stress of having to um, fix or create your index and your reference list manually, then you realize that it increases the amount of work that you need to put into completing the work a lot more of human activity these days have been automated. So it still doesn't make sense that we will still want to be going the manual way. I mean, there are a lot of standards and sometimes being able to remember all the, 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 the formats, the punctuations and everything that goes into following or referencing in a particular standard alone, it's, it's work enough. So it is hoped that as we take you through this um, reference management package or software, uh, participants at the end will be able to fast track their work, make things a bit easier, and then re-channel the energy or hello. Yeah, re-channel the energy into the actual work instead of having to spend uh, a lot of time looking at how to, you know, generate reference. A lot of this have put some students into extension. You will never believe it, but some of the supervisors, because they sign and append that your work is of standard and that it should be accepted and be awarded as having a master's or an L or a PhD. It is normally their signature that is there. So most of them, for academic integrity's sake, would like to ensure that what they are signing is actually what they think you have done. So some of them spend time to go through your reference list. So it's important that we take the time to do it right and how best to be able to carry out this activity done to use some of these automated tools to be able to do this. Okay. Now, for those who may have interest in other packages, the university subscribes to EndNote as well. So if you're already skilled in it, we want to take you through just to give you option. But then you look at the process, do your own comparison. If you need to continue to use your EndNote, if what you have is not active, active or if it's a trial version, please find time, send your laptop to the research commons in the BAM lab and then the university's own account will be used to activate it for you so that you have an activated version to be able to have access to all the advanced features of the package. So that's basically about it. So the university subscribes to and, and Mendeley. We are going to take it through Mendeley. And I've always said that the reason we do that is that with Mendeley, the only thing you need to activate it is your student email. So once you have access to your student email, you are always able to activate the account. Please, administrators, let's see at the background. You are always able to activate your account and 
be able to use it. But when it comes to EndNote, we will have to activate the account for you. And this day of online teaching, what it means is that you still then have to squeeze time to come to campus if you were, uh, or if that were not the case. We like, I bet I like to promote the Mendeley to that wherever you are, you are able to activate and account yourself immediately. You create one and then be able to manage it yourself. And also, when you have a challenge, right? on your phone or if you place a call to us, especially me, I'll be able to request you on my own phone. Okay, so that's just a bit about introduction. Just a moment. Okay. So we're going to at Mendeley, what is Mendeley? So Mendeley's a reference. Please mute your mic, mute your mic, mute your mic. Mendeley is a reference management package that is owned by Elsevier. Now, if you didn't know who Elsevier is, Elsevier is one of the giants in the book and research industry. So Elsevier owns books and they also own Science Direct. And they are the owners of Mendeley. So Mendeley is quite big on the market now. So Mendeley is one of the reference management packages or software that are used to help researchers to be able to for manage their research content. So research content, I mean the articles and the ebooks that you download, bibliographic data of the websites and other electronic systems that you visit. You need to normally collect all this information such that once you make use of them or once you quote from them, you are able to cite them appropriately. Now, the challenge that sometimes arises is that you do this and then later you realize that maybe you find yourself on campus working and then whilst on the work you realize that some articles that you downloaded uh, were on a pen drive that you left at home there are chances that you may have to download them again but how are you sure that you remember the search terms you used if you have to guess to find them what it means is that you still be spending time time that you could have used writing you will not be using the same time downloading the article again, or in the other scenario, you would have to wait to get back home so you can uh, fetch those articles to work on. The other side is also that you, if you happen to be using your own modem, then you're still spending on the same articles in terms of data twice, instead of having to use them once. So Mendeley as a reference management package enables you to collate and manage all these resources when you have you lay your hands on them so that you are able to make use of um, them anywhere you may be, which is what I call being device independent. Being device independent is that once you have your resources, your research material, general articles and ebooks and other web content in your Mendeley account, you become device independent in the sense that wherever you find yourself, any other machine or computer that you lay your hand on, you can log in and have access to all the resources. The possibility being that Elsevier has a cloud server on which they put backup of everything you add into your account, such that wherever you are, even on your phone, you are able to get access to them when you are in a bus traveling or when you are somewhere relaxing under some tree you know taking some fresh air at least you will have your phone by you what it means is that you can at least be looking at some of the databases or some articles that may have been suggested to you and then you can uh, you know push them into your Mendeley account even with your phone meaning that you don't need to wait too long to be able to 
uh, do this. So once you are able to find and push articles from your phone to your account, what it means is that you, you save yourself some time because normally you would have had to sit at your desk, your research desk working, all right, before you begin to look for articles to work. But once you are able to do this, even on your phone, what it means is that even at leisure, you are able to look at research materials that are related to your field of interest and be able to add them to your account, meaning that you make, you build your library, your research library, you know, way ahead of even a research activity, even before you have sat down to write a paper or to complete an assignment, you realize that your first point of contact in search of information resources to complete that project has to be your Mendeley account instead of having to log in online into another database. So building your library becomes very easier and also takes away the stress of having to de dedicate a particular period that I'm going to the library to find materials or I'm going to get data to find. I mean, at any point in time, you are able to do this. The software on its own has an algorithm that suggests related materials to you as you are creating the account and as you add content to your account. In this case, you realize that looking at what you have in your account, the system is able to suggest some articles to you based on what you have so that if you need to uh, use them, you look at the abstract and maybe the content you like it, then you add it to your account instead of when you have to wait until that you are able to uh, make it enough for the project before you also spend the time that we have used to write to be looking for research materials for the project. So that, those are some of the advantages that comes with it. Now on point two, we are just saying that let's have your hands up. Let me finish with this screen and then I'll take your questions, please. Now as a Mendeley, as a collaborative, uh, it's also a collaborative and networking tool. What that means is that as you research, in most cases as students in a group work, um, if I happen to be a group of a project or a group in a project with some other what it means is that if I find a research content that is useful for the project, you add it via mail or put it in a pen drive, and then when you be adult, you give it to them or you have to meet at a point, you know, when we used to do this, when we used to work, collaborate physically. Now that yeah, as a result of COVID, a lot of these are online. This fits into it because you don't need to meet physically. If I find a research material for a group project, or if I know a friend's or a colleague's research topic, and I have on a material that I think will be useful, I can even be kind of sharing it with the colleague. So Mendeley allows researchers to create groups and then share this group with their colleagues in which they are able to send or post relevant materials with these chances, collaborative research and network. And as a reference manager, as I mentioned earlier, it enables you to first of all, your research materials. So you have all of them in your account, which is what leads to the research I mean, the, the, the independence, the device independence I mentioned earlier. It also enables you to insert your in-text citation, and as you do, you automatically receive um, a, an automated generation of list, meaning that if you use the package, the reference managers especially, you need to finish the work before you now come back to the reference list. So as you work and then do index, you realize that the system automatically for you at the end of the, the work, the project. So that by the time you hit your last post, as I always say, your reference list would have been populated. All you do is to demarcate a location in your project where you intend for the reference list to be populated. Once you do that, you do this one, once that is done, you realize that the system helps you with the rest by putting the list as and when you put in your index. Now, as a time saver, as I mentioned, at your leisure time in a bus, you know, wherever you're always able to 
work, find access, put them into your library. These are things that you normally spend time looking for using the package. Some of these things can be done even at leisure, wherever you find yourself. Once you are with one electronic gadget or the other, you are able to list the suggestions that are given to you. The time saving also has to do with the index and then the reference list generation, also being able to share content for list, which then fast track the group work. So that you don't need to physically meet to share content. Okay. Let me hear from the Covitio. Covitio, you can unmute and talk to me. The engineer Covitio, yes, please. So, I don't need to. I don't hear you, please. No, I don't have not raised my hand, please. Oh, your hand is raised. Okay, so that's fine. So let me know why, please. Joseph, ah, Joseph, if you, you your hand is up, if you have any question, you can. Joseph, you can meet and talk to him. Yeah, senior. Actually, we're trying the system earlier before you join. So personally, I don't have any. Oh, okay, okay. But I'm um, enjoying your. At the moment. Thank you. So that, that's fine. Okay. So then we'll wait uh, until the first half of the presentation before I take the rest of the questions. Please, if you don't mean to ask questions at this moment, please lower your hand and let's proceed. Okay. So. We're saying that what's the, these are some of the benefits. So being becoming device dependent, a scenario of it is what you can see on your screen. So as you see with this chart, all that's on this table is everything else is digital. If vision was uh, the manual scene, you realize that you have some so many other things around the table which meant or which would mean that anytime you have to leave this particular desk you either have to carry all those materials with you to the next location where you'll be working or you have to go and come back before you have to continue because you are unable to carry all the materials with you so these are some of the advantages and when you do the research process those are some of the advantages that you stand to make. All right, so I will be moving straight away into practical. So these are some of the key benefits, automatic generation of bibliographies, collaborate easily, um, import from other softwares and reference management, find papers, uh, access your papers from anywhere online and all that. So for the rest, I'm going to switch off the slides and then we continue the rest practically. I'll like to do the practical demonstration so you see how it works. Just a moment, please. Okay, so this is, so the me as a reference manager has two interfaces. Okay, so we have what is known as the Mendeley desktop and then the Mendeley web. Now, the desktop is the package that you use for writing citing as you proceed with your project. And then the web is like managing your resources online in work. So if you need to change your password, if you need to um, check some of the items to attract some content from online directly into your company you use Mendeley Web. But Mendeley Desktop is a package you use for citing and referencing as you proceed with the work. Now, as you see on my interface, what you see here is my account in which I have at the moment 1,011 documents. A few of them are not so relevant for me. Normally when I'm doing things like that, for 
examples sake i tried something so some of which we have to but a lot of them at least about 900 of them I know that i actually added to my account so to use the package first of all i always like to mention that doesn't take away your duty as a researcher or student to have to find the relevant materials so it is still your duty visit any relevant research uh, database in an ebook platform or a general database to use your relevant search term to locate the materials that you think are related to the work or the project at hand so you to do that as you continue to do or as you have always done but what the software helps you to do is to be able to keep them for us i have here and this takeaway as i mentioned uh, the the situation where you may leave a pen drive and not some of the files at the point where you intend you may intend to work or also have some in your email where at a point that you plan to work you probably may not have good internet source and for that matter may not be able to log in to the mail and load them once you have this so this is a desktop app this content, as I have, I don't need internet to use. So then it becomes an offline that I use to complete my work. Only that periodically you need access to the internet to be able to synchronize your account. Say that what you have here is back up so that the device independence scenario that I mentioned is also, um, enhanced. <clears throat> okay, so as assignment, we are going to look at how to add the content you locate or download to your Mendeley account. As I mentioned, it is CRT to upload the content that you find or that's for into your Mendeley account so that when you need to cite, you um, consult the software, the Mendeley software to be able to do the citation here is that once you use the software to do it, then you don't spend time to also generate your reference list and arrange them, the software to manipulate them and then arrange them for you. Okay. So we're going to look at how to add content. Now to add content, <coughs> excuse me, you either go to file and then you see these tools here or immediately on the toolbar, you see add. So let's pop down add and then I'll explain the drop down list. Now we have add files, we have add folder, watch folder, and add entry manually. So <clears throat> add files. You choose add files in a situation where you intend to select from the particular content you are uploading, or from the particular folder from which you are uploading some content to your Mendeley account. And I normally like to use the example of the downloads folder. The download folder contains so many items, a lot of which in most cases are not reset related. So if you need to, if you downloaded some content in there and you need to upload them into your Mendeley account, then you use add files. Add for the situation where you have a dedicated folder to download research related materials, meaning that you intend to extract all of them into your account. So in that case, to do that at once, you choose add folder, meaning that everything in there will be uploaded into your account. So if the content you intend to add to your account is not all or from the particular folder are not all research relevant or related, please use add files so that you can sell it. So for example, if I click on add files now, and I go to download, for example, I go to download, you can see that I have some web files, and some PDF files, and I have some videos, so many other things. So if I want to choose this, what it means that I select from the lot, right? select from the lot, and then you add to your account, okay? So that's basically it. But if I go back, and I do that folder, you realize that the system doesn't even give me the chance to individual files. I'm only presented with folder options. So meaning that 
in this case, I would have had a folder in which I have research materials like this one, okay? So then I put them in, I select this and I click, okay, once I do that, every single article in there is going to be extracted into my Mendeley account. Okay. Then watch folder is a situation where you create, folder, let's say on your desktop and you as a system, you assign the to it. So meaning that when you are downloading, you direct them into that particular folder and the system automatically extracts those files. You don't have to go through these two first processes of add files and or add folder. So you create a folder. And so if I click on watch folder, so if I choose, let's say this folder for the system, but then at any time I'm downloading research materials, this is where I'll send them. So once I send them here, the system will have to follow and then pick else i'll have to use the first two instances as as i download them in there the system will extract them into my account and then the last way of adding content is add entry manually add entry manually now add entry manually is not used for situations where you have a physical book in hand so you have a physical book in hand, if you can see this. So if I have a book like this and I have it at my desk and I'm working, what it means is that because it's not an electronic book, I can't copy and paste. I'd rather type out, read from it and type into it into my work. So when I finish doing that, I have to cite it. Now remember the idea for using the software is to be able to enter our index, okay? with the software so that the software will at the end automatically put a reference list for us. So if you don't enter all the bibliographic data about all the resources into the software, what happens is that you typed in, you typed in the in-text citation manually, the software will not be able to populate its corresponding reference list. So that reason, even if it's a manual book, if it's a website, if it's a video, you still need to create the bibliographic details of it in the software so that what can be cited after you have typed in the quotation, you click on it. So uh, let me see for this example in here. You are so document. Uh, so if you look at something like this, Kim. Jehum, and then this particular. So for this one, you can see I don't have the PDF attached. Okay, so things like um, so like this one. So a Japan, I don't have this an article, but I don't have the, the the PDF attached as I have for this and that. So for this, this and that, I don't have the PDF. I only have the bibliographic data. So this one from. WHO's website about Corona. All right. So what it means is that you look at the bibliographic data and then you create the reference information in the software so that if I need that, what I do is that after I have, um, let me open Microsoft Word so that we try it out. So after I typed in a quotation, so let's assume that this book I have in hand, I'm quoting something from it. So once I type it in the work, forgive me for the rest of it. So assuming this is what I have, instead of normally going to say, so this is the quotation I have, so according to and then I'll copy and paste. Because it's manual, I typed it in, I read and typed in, all right? So to enter the ref, the in-text citation, what I do is that I go to reference. So we're doing this as we go along so that I go to reference and I click on insertion. Okay, I can choose to click on Google and then for something like this, so I choose 
a Japan. And then I click on insert citation. Now the citation is intended to be inserted where your case is, so you realize this is it. Now because the citation comes before the quotation or because the name of the author is part of the sentence, I need to, sorry, uh, put only the year in brackets. So I do some small editing there like that. And then I click outside. So we'll come to this later. So this is it. All right. And then there's also the other scenario where I'm reading the article. So this one has a PDF. So and Joseph. So if I double click on this, I have the article open for me. Zoom. I am taking this part to buttress a point my work. So I copy from here. So this is electronic. So my, I'm able to copy from here to this point. All right. And then I go to the work and then I paste it. So once I paste, that means that I place my cursor either before or at the end of the quotation, and I go to insertion and look for the same material. This is what I copied the content from. That's Hartfeld and Joseph. So I select it and I click on it. All right, so you have Hartfeld 2019, okay? So that's the, the quotation is inserted. So that's basically what you do. So what I'm saying is that when you have to use, or when you're using a, um, a physical material, either than if it's electronic, is that I, all these I downloaded and uploaded them. But because if these ones are hard, you can't upload them. So you create a graphic data. So we are going to use a website to. As an as example, to create a bibliographic data of a content for which we don't have the full source. Okay. So then I go to add and I click on add entry manually. So then it gives you this dialog box for you to provide the details of the material. So assuming this is it or a website, then I am going to create the bibliographic data about the particular content or if it's a book. So for now, I normally like to use website because I realize sometimes when it comes to picking data from website to create bibliographic information, a lot of us don't go the full stretch. Sometimes we don't describe it enough to enable a reader to follow suit to find, uh, besides the URL that we normally put there. Okay, so when to fill this form, what you do is that source type. Now, what we are so when you come here, you realize that it gives you the chance. If it's a, if it's a book, if it's a book shop, a section, so a book section is the same as a book chapter. So if it's a computer program, conference proceedings, encyclopedia, and all that. Okay? So depending on the material, if it's a journal article, that's because a newspaper article that you choose. If you know the material you have at hand, now we're going to use. So if it's a thesis, there's a thesis here. So assuming you borrow the thesis from your library, or as many institutions now have thesis online on the library, then you would uh, choose thesis. Now the reason you need to choose the source type appropriately is because the bibliographic information you need to cite a thesis is slightly different from what you need to cite a journal article and also slightly different from what you need to cite a book. So a place you choose appropriately, then the system will provide you the necessary fields to be able to cite. So we are going to choose a web page, a web page, a web page. So for a web page, to start, I'm going to open a URL so we can um, use that to work. Want to open a URL, so let me pick a new tab. Okay. So this our tab. Um, World Bank. Where is the URL? 
So I zoom in with a social scientist. So you're doing something on international finance and you want to check World Bank website to see if you can get some data. So we are going to World Bank's website and see. So we are on this site and then now please note that in terms of referencing, you do not cite a website, you are expected to cite a web page. So unlike a book where in the case of a verbatim quotation, you need to indicate the page. In the same way, when you are on a website, you need to cite the particular page on which you took the information so that the reader is able to get there easily. Okay, so these are uh, some content on the site. We are going to lose so 2021 spring meetings, open press conference, rethinking debt financing. Great. So as you we're doing something on debt financing, you come here and you see this. So I click on this as a resource I intend to consult. So this is the page, and we take it that this is the content i think the program an upcoming program so you can see uh there's still the list of speakers okay so let's take the video there as well let's take that this is the content we are looking for okay and then um i hope i had Okay, so let's let's use this. So we are on this page, and we are, the assumption is that um, let me see, um, Zola Baruna of Nigeria began the conversation by explaining how government debt can affect the lives of every people. Angolan French minister spoke with. Um, Okay, so reducing unsustainable debt requires diverse solutions and commitment to help countries focus on building a resilient, inclusive economies. So I think I'm this instructive. I'm writing on debt financing. So I copy this to buttress a point in my work. Remember, we already have our working. So I come here and I paste it. Now it's a website. Now I've said that you can already uh, in here type World Bank. Okay. World Bank. I think it's, uh, the year. Let's go back and find the year. You can type it inside manually. But if you do this, if you type the reference list in manually, it means that when you are done with the work, you still have to go to your reference page. Let me create that at once. So this is a reference page. Okay. You still have to go to the reference page to go and also type the reference list. So in order to fast track that, we are saying that make sure you automate this process so that as you type in, as you enter your index, the reference list is automatically uh, populated. Now for what we have already entered, let me populate so that we see today i want to do everything as though we are working so i put my mouse pointer and i need the head and reference list so to publish your reference list now i said i do that only once the reference list button is activated only once so we go to references and then you can see insert bibliography please be sure your, your cursor is where it's supposed to be and then you go under references under the tools the mandate type tools you see insert bibliography so i click on it now i have started two people so that's what i have now what's my reference style to change your reference style, you come here all right so my reference style is on american psychological association seventh edition so that is what i have here okay so it's ready now you realize that because i type this in let me just put World Bank, comma, let's say 2010. We'll check the date. I'm intentionally doing this. Sorry. 
then I close the bracket. You realize that I have three index citation, but on my reference list, as I click to populate, let me even refresh so that if you think I did it before entering, you realize I'm refreshed, but still I have only two, all because this ones I use Mendeley to enter them. So you can see they have this special highlight at the background, but on this, it doesn't have. All right, so what it means is that if by the end of let's say PhD or an MPhil MA thesis, the many references you have, if let's say you have about 20 of them coming from web sources, then you are going to type in this yourself. Now, you can see from I also sorted alphabetically already, which is part of the uh, APA standard. Okay, so it saves you that time. So how do we also automate this? To automate this, we need to now create the information about this website from which we took this content in Mendeley site instead of typing it in manually. So let's go finish with that. So I'm taking you back to the website. Um, sorry. Okay. So first of all, who is the author of the website? The author of the website. Now, here I need, we are going to this session, this part is going to be active. So, please, um, I need answers. Who is the author of this website? Hello, please. Um, Please unmute and talk to me. Those who have your hands. Uh, am I co-sharing so that someone can manage the Hello, those are allowed to speak. You can unmute and talk to me. Um, okay, so I've lowered all the hands. If you intend to answer your reason again, then I can unmute you to talk to me. So who is the author of this site? Okay, so I have Franz Wober. Franz, come to talk to me and you still Dramani. Yeah, hello. Yeah. So, okay. Yes, sir. So the art of the website is actually the World me. Bank Group. The art of the website is actually the World Bank Group. Uh -huh. Why are you so sure? Is it because we are on their website? Hello? Yes. Saying that because, no, uh, so we are looking at the, we are looking for the author of this content here. It's I'm not saying you're wrong. I want this to be clear. It's who is the author? It's I'm not talking about the contributors. So in a book, you can list people who have said some things, their reputations. I'm talking about the content here. Who owns, who have rights, the author rights? For me, I saw, I saw someone like uh, Tori Smith, who is the author. And, and the- He's also like who? Tori, Tori Smith. Where is that? Come again. Where, where did you see that? Uh, on the on the right hand side, uh, right right hand pane of, of, of the page. Yes, so the picture. Right hand side of the page. Yes, yeah, yeah, that color. That oh, color so this is this is a block down. Uh, these two related. You can see this is a blog. 
This is a link to a blog. So okay. I think it's different from what we are reading. Yeah. So this, this is a reason I want this exercise. Because if you don't take care, you assign the authorship wrongly. Yeah. Okay, so let me follow the question a bit. Assuming I have some name here, all right, up here above rethink in the title or even beneath the title. All right. Now we all know that we are on World Bank's website. Who then would the author be or who would have the right of authorship? For this content. So, so to me, to me, uh, in situation where you are not able to clearly tell who is the author, then the the organization yeah. become become the. Uh, the money so, uh, to to the in, in this case, in this case, the World Bank. Not speaking of me. Don't wait. I'm going to put a link in the video description. I feel like normally when people do their 10 million subscriber videos, there's a lot of like soul searching and there's no other background. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, so you should talk to me. Yeah, so to me I said in situation where uh, the author is not clearly stated in the website, uh, on the web page. Uh -huh. So uh, the, the 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 organization, in this case the World Bank, become the author of, of the of the uh, piece. Of the content, yes, of the content. Okay, thank you very much. That that's good. So you realize that in some website or in some, some piece, once you get there, so for this content, this write up, you normally it's not the title. You see a name, an author's name, the, the date. All right. Even though we are on website web page, it doesn't automatically mean that everything in here. So, for instance, one of us online can write a piece that World Bank consider to be good enough to share. They can post that on their website. When they do that, it doesn't mean it's for them. A staff of a World Bank, okay, depending on the capacity that they wrote a piece, the copyright would either be for them or for the institution, which is World Bank. So we need to look at it. But for what we have now on this screen, we can easily assign to the World Bank. Okay, so in that case, when you see the dates here, all right, and the date and the author's name as part of the piece, please uh, try and assign the authorship to the person. It's not always automatic that we go on a corporate website, then the piece there is for the corporate entity. All right, so for this piece, this is our title. We have concluded that the author is World Bank. Now, what is the date of publication? Yes, yeah, anybody? Normally, normally what, what I do is uh, to get the date of publication, I scroll down and see uh, sometimes at the very last end, you see some, some date there. And if it's not written okay. at the beginning. So at the very last end. So now I'm at, the, I'm at the very last end. Where exactly do you find your date? Yeah. OK. So you see that on the status bar, yeah. you can see the right information, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right. We look for it. But don't always rush down here. Because the date down here refer to the date on which this web page. So a web page is like a page in a book. As and when the website grows, pages are added. Sometimes a page can be created and then content may be uploaded. So if you look at this page, this all these things will lead to other pages. All right. So if you don't take care, you will assign them wrongly. So you click on it, it takes you to the page. And then you look for it. It's only when you don't find the date that it does bar, and then because sometimes they have say so in a situation where you have let's say 2020 down here, you have 2021, as you can see on the title in the video here, it means is that the 2021 is the current date, or if you have it here, all right. And when you don't have it, then you can use the one on the status bar. 
So now we have our author, we have our title, we have our date. So let's go back to Mendeley to create them. So the source title page, the title, I delete this and re rethinking debt, financing the future amid crisis. Who is the author? Now the author we have agreed is Bank. Please, I need you to pay attention here. Okay. Immediately I entered World Bank. Once I'm entering the author's name, you can see at the top here as last I have last name, comma, first name. And then you have the same thing written beneath. Now the system per that is telling you that um, you should enter the details of the author this way so that the software will be able to do the search appropriately. So meaning that in entering the the author's name, you need to enter the last name first, put a comma, and then the other names of the author sep separated by spaces. Okay. Second line means is that if the source happens to have been authored by more than one person, then you don't enter the second author and the rest in a continuous line. Press enter and move to the next line like this. All right and then you add this person. So that's basically what, what it means. So please, let's take note. One thing of importance is that once I start typing World Bank, you realize that down here, I have World Bank, and I have World Bank into bracket institution or organization. What is it asking? The software is trying to find out from you whether the data you are entering here is that of a person or an institution. The essence is that if there is a person, then the system says enter the surname first, separate by a comma. But if the data is an institution, the question is what is the surname of the institution? So in this case, what is the surname of World Bank? I don't think anybody online uh, regardless of our experience in the naming ceremonies, can tell the surname of World Bank because institution. So then, what you do is that you click here down here after typing the name of the institution, you click on World Bank into bracket institution. You cut this link. <coughs> what you are basically doing is that you are telling that this, as I have in here, is the name of an institution. So in time. I instruct you to cite with it, please represent it as a cell unit and do not break it into surname and other names. Because remember, if it's the name of a person, normally in the index, it's the surname that will be represented. And then in the geographic details, the reference list, the other names will be included, though uh, abbreviated. Okay, so once I tap World Bank, I'm going to click on World Bank into bracket institution like that. Okay, we also agree that the year was 2021. 2021. Okay, now for web page, we don't need page. And then because it's the same organization, so we can't read World Bank here. And then we don't need keywords to cite. Now, date, date assessed. Date assessed is also one of the key areas that you need to pay attention to because websites get updated, websites, you know, get taken down. All right, content on websites get archived. Wow. So, what it means is that if you cite or code the content in your and at a later date, your supervisor or a reader goes to read your content and is unable to trace the file. Entering the date you access the content, I always say it's a form of a disclaimer. So you are saying that me, Kwekumenu, on this day, that date, this is what I saw on the World Bank's website. Should you go there today or another date and it's not there? I am not to blame. 
Okay, so that also is able to help your supervisor and assessment committee or to be able to write, let's say, to the institution that on this day, maybe I have found in a particular book or a source that you had this particular content on your website. Can you please share your archive with me I need for maybe some uh, work or project? All right, when it is not there. No one else can trace the the can even write because you write that you want a particular content on which date it makes it difficult but once you can tell them the date that you found it at least you give them the range and they are able to set their archives to trace so we're going to enter today's date which is 9th april 20 sorry so 9th april 2021 and then we don't have so we live in institution is the same as the world bank then the next thing we need is a url please never try to type in a url please the site click inside the address bar use control c or right click on the highlighted text or url and copy you go back to mendeley and then you paste all right, never have to type in a URL. Okay. Now, one thing I also say is that if you come here, you can see files, add files. Now, you can go to a website and see a content that you find very useful, very, very important. As you go, you go from it, it is possible that you may type something day as you type. You get tired, you close, probably you are at work or you are on campus the following day you want to continue the internet is not working so i normally say that it will be prudent to save the page and attach it to the bibliography that you create so that you are able to later for anything can happen there may be some instance that you need to prove to your survivor where you got the content and then the internet may not be working it can cause delays so when you do this you are easily able to get back to the source. So what I normally do is that I highlight the page, the content, because these are other things I can't take all. And then I right click. I'm using Google Chrome. It's very easy to do with this. And then so Mozilla as well. So you highlight the content and then you click on print as though you want to print it. And then the system will enable you to download it, save it, and then you can attach it to the bibliographic data. So this is this is the content, okay? So as it is, normally if your system is connected to a printer, it's the printer, that the destination will be the printer. So you pop the arrow down, and then you choose save as PD, right? I normally do it, so mine is normally by default on this. Then you can click on save. The system asks you <clears throat> where you want it saved. So for easy identification, let me choose desktop. Okay, and then I save. So what I mean, what it means is that I go back to Mendeley. Um, so under files, I click on add file. I browse to desktop. Uh, rethinking that this is it and I click open now I see that it's been attached so anytime I need to go back to the web page now this is very important because students work especially anything at all that can cause you delay at any point and I normally say that this is normally happen when you are pressed with time so you put in some of these measures to ensure that you you these things don't delay you Okay, you are able to work fast. Now, the last item here, it says unpublished, exclude from Mendeley Web Catalog. Now, because this is something that you have just created to use alone, unlike normal articles where others may also have interest in using, then you check mark this box, say unpublished work, exclude. So what you are saying that you don't want it to be listed on your Mendeley account so that other Mendeley users will see. Yes, what it means is that 
I have a Mendeley account, all of you online now, I can say have Mendeley account, and we are as at now 247 online, okay? Which means that all of us have access or we have content in our account and we have created some kind of a database or a repository. So what happens is that when you search in Mendeley, some of these things are presented to you, only that if your institution does not subscribe to it, you won't get it. So if the material you attach is something that you want, don't want to share, like student thesis and all that, then you check it. So I take it, we are done with the creation of the bibliographic. So I click on save. So that is it. It will end. Yes, hello. Yeah. My question is, uh, if I have uh, the document saved on my desktop as we did, and then later I attach it uh, using the Mendeley, my question is, in case I delete it from my desktop, would I still have access to it? Yes, when you add it to Mendeley, Mendeley creates its own backup. So it's no longer dependent on the original file that you downloaded. Once you add it, delete it to save space. Thank you. Okay, so my uh, last Okay, question. so... In, initially, initially, when you started, I wanted to find uh, out... Can you hold on to the questions? Okay. Okay, okay, you, you ask, ask this one, let's continue. Okay, so what I wanted to find out is that if um, uh, if I it means that if I download if I upload my document on Mendeley, uh, uh, even though people may some people may not be able to download, but they can see the, con the uh, they can read a bit of the content. I want to know how safe it is. When they, I they can see the bibliographic details. Okay. You say how what? So how how how? Safe yes, it is. I didn't get the question. My question: I want to find out how safe it is or how secret how. For instance, if that document that I want, I don't want people to see. Uh, how private it is, how private, yeah, how private it is. is that is that the question. How okay, so what's happening? Yes, okay, so uh, technically there is security in terms of copyright protection instead of privacy. What I'm saying is that these are so just like you and i will all go to science direct to go and download these materials are not they are online okay so what happens that your private information like your name your bio data that you use to create the account that will not be displayed it is only the bibliographic for the articles and ebooks you have in your account which is listed on endless web catalog so that if somebody is also a humanly user is also looking for the area then it will pop up, but it will not show that coming from you. So there is no linkage from you. Because Mendeley is keeping the backup of all the files, especially because your account is backed up online, it will populate it, but it will not show that it's coming from you. And when the user tries to download it, the user will have to use their own credentials to download it. So they are alerted that this material is available. That is all. It has no link to you. Thank okay. you. Okay, so this is what we just did. Okay, so now I'm going back to our work file. So I come here, this is the content we listed. And realize that when we populated a reference list, the word one didn't come because we typed it in manually. So I'm going to delete what I typed in, and I'll use the bibliographic details we just created to cite, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so the case is still there. And then you always go to friends. You go to insert, all right. I normally like to click on go to Mendeley. And then, so I have just activated recently. That's why you see only this. If I go to all documents, you see all my files. Just to find it. And then I click on it. This is what we just created. Then I click on set. So this is it. World Bank 2021. Now, when I click on, you can see that now it has the background highlights like the rest. So let's go to the reference list. You see automatically it's been created. All right, these are the details we entered. So that is what we have, okay. You have the URL to visit the site. All right, and that by the time you finish, everything is set, you don't waste time. 
Okay, so that's about creating bibliographic details of content to site using the add entry manually. Now, as I mentioned, you can use this add entry manually to create. So, assuming I went to YouTube and I found some video, okay, and in the video, there is a programmation that I find instructive and I want to code the author. Now that we have online this, if you watch some maybe video from the outside and the instructor or the lecturer says something that you want to code, of course, you can do that. I can cite it. So we have um, film. So you can film, and then Bob is a video on YouTube. They always have a title, a good title there. You can always tell the owner, okay, of, of the video writers. <coughs> and then you create the graphic details about it. Then when you go to you know, use the site, so web page and all other sources, okay including physical books and pieces that you borrowed from the library, you use the ad entry manually to create a bibliography for citing. Thank you on that one. Okay, so the next activity, I want to finish with Mendeley Desktop and then before we switch to online, I will, so please hold on. The next activity is the management of the content. Now we have learned how to add materials in account and then we have all, even already tried how to cite. Now, what you have, as I told you, I have at the moment thousands. So I've added one. It used to be eleven. I've added. I have a thousand and twelve ebooks and journal articles in my account. How do you easily find them to cite? So when you want to cite, normally it is not difficult. It would have been the same article you were reading. So if I double click on arrow like this okay i am i have opened it so if i want to find one i'm in microsoft word all right and i click in station i know i'm going to look for uh barrel i already said it, that's why i know i'm going to look for barrel to site okay so it becomes easier to do that so now we've been here Mendeley or the package gives you the opportunity to create folders okay folders to be able to size so as you can see i have a lot of folders in my account so how do you create folders now the importance of it is that it helps you to categorize your sources because if your account populates as many as at some point it becomes difficult to even be aware if you have a particular content so once you create the folder to sort them out at any point so uh, working with a library so i have a folder that i've named library so if we need content so service level agreement for the digital library all right disaster management practices of academic library so anytime i find any article that is on librarianship or information science this is the folder i push it in whether i need to use for it or not i push it in there so you can start here that i think this i think was created when we had the training last year so let me just uh, remove it for now. Okay, and then I have ICT, uh, is it for learning? Okay, I have data divide, data divide, so many of them. Okay, I have a folder for distance education. So any content has to do with distance education, take it or leave it. As we speak, all of our distance students, you can block that, you are main campus. Nobody cares. We are all COVID students. So what you do, I do is I push them in here. Okay. So when it comes to finding them, it becomes easier. So now how do you create a folder? So to create a folder, you can start from up here, click, or down here. You see, create folder. So you create, so I'm going to create a, a grass sack again. You click and then the spot get highlighted. So immediately, you type your folder name. So I type Rasag2021. Okay, so that's the folder name I've created. So meaning that if I'm supposed to do some research on Rasag, any material that I find, I'm going to put them in this folder. It becomes easy to find. Now in information science, there's no essence putting resources together if at the end you can't retrieve them. So creating folders to manage this content is equally very important because 
fast you can find them quickly and locate them. It speeds up, even though many seconds and minutes, you never know, it adds up to the speed of work, which enables you to work longer than, uh, you know, longer enough before stress and fatigue sets in. Okay, so that's how to create a folder. Now to create a subfolder in the parent folder, please hold on with the questions, I'll take them. To create a subfolder in the parent folder, what you do is that, so you can see that, for example, in this folder, I have subfolder. So this is a folder I created for a course I took. Now you can see that the parent folder is the year. And in there, I have DL601, CISO2, CISO611, and all that. So, <laughs> so what happens, that, and this was way back to 2014, meaning that once you do this, you have all the articles for the various courses and the various assignments that you complete for that program segmented. So then finding them at a later date becomes easier, right? So that's one of the important folders and creating subfolders under them. So when I want to create a subfolder in 2021, all you do is right click on it and then it's new folder. Now I realize that a new folder has been indented, making it a sub of me. Okay. So I can say, um, all right. That's it. So when you come into Grasser, I pop the arrow down, sorry, like this, I have seminar, all right? So if there are any other activities that Grasser engages in, I can be creating the folders as and when the various specific subfields surfaces, okay? So that, that's how to create a folder and advantages and importance of doing that. The other feature that software also gives you is groups, creating groups to manage your work. Now, there's this folder that I always use, for example, you can see among the list of groups that I have, some of which were created, for example, this particular one is research methods, okay? So this is a group that I created and shared with some uh, people. Okay, so in here, what I have here are uh, research method books and content uh, in social science. Okay, so the people that I shared with, anytime sports have some content that is useful, they also put it in this group so that I, none of the group members have to kind of look for that same content elsewhere. So once you know that it's in the group account, when you sign into your Mendeley account, you go to the group account and use it. So when we go on, I'll show you, you see the group members and all that. So how do you the group down here, just like the folder, you can see group. So you click, and then the system presents you with a chance to link the group. So yes, again, so I do Basag, um, Legon, Let's say research, research, yeah. You can put a description to it, that is fine. Okay, now, and before December 2020, there used to be three other group types. Now they have collapsed all, because I had my account before, that's why you see it's not in your account, you see private group alone, okay? So once you have it, um, that is it, and then you can share. So once that is done, now it is only the private group that you can create and share source content. Okay. So once that is done, you click on create. So remember, you need to give it a name. Oh, sorry, I didn't change. So I need to change to private. So I got it. Remember, you need to give it a name, and immediately you create, you can add members by their email. So if I put a say, please enter the email address of the members you would like to invite. Multiple address, you can separate them with a semicolon. Okay, so assuming Grassard creates a group that they share some specific research content with Grassard members, so what you do is that you you can paste them, type the, the emails and separate them with 
same color. Okay, so that's basically it. So it's asking me to enter, so I skip this. So this is the group I just created. Still reading, so that's it. Grassack Legon Research. That's it. So now, how do you add? I think I didn't do that. I add them into a folder. So when we created the Grassack 2021 folder, so for example, just like the way you go to a house, so the same way I click on the particular folder into which I want them to default. Your folder option is on all documents, which lists all your content. Okay, but when you click on a particular folder, computer science, then you have only the content in that folder space. But I, when I go to back to all documents, everything, regardless of the folder in which it's site, are populated. So you can populate all the content, all documents. Okay, and you can as well sort them. Say recently added or recently read and all these. If you also have some publications, some of your own, you can upload them under my publications and you have them. Or when you click on document. So this this is it. So to add a content to the grass tag, grass tag as it's open. So this is the interface because we don't have anything in it. Then I go to add and choose add files. Okay. And I can choose this that we created, okay? It's like this. So this is this, okay? World Bank, corporate debt, blah, blah, blah. So this is it, I've just added. You do the same thing with adding content to the group. So Grassag uh, Research, where are you? Okay. So Grassack Legon, so this was last year. So Grassack Legon, the same way as it's the interface is open, you can either do drag and drop or you go to add files. Okay. Now you can add the same file. Okay. To, <clears throat> so I can choose more than what this. Right. You can add the same file to separate folders. It doesn't mean that they are repeated. It's the same thing, it's just a shadow of the same file. Okay, so this is it. I've just added. So adding content into the folders for the thing I go to add. So assuming I have a folder from Grassack that contains research conducted by Grassack, then I will choose add folder and then I'll extract it into this Grassack group. All right, so that's about how to create a folder, your content, and also how to maneuver through the sources to make it easier to identify materials and then also how to create a folder to enable group uh, rich work and how to upload content into that folder now let me specifically look at how to cite again and so that we move online okay now how do you cite the moment you create your mendeley account please Remember that for Mendeley to be able to work with or collaborate with Microsoft Word, remember once you start a page, then on you work using Microsoft Word and Mendeley. Okay, so it means that the two softwares need to be integrated. Now they have automated that. The moment you install Mendeley, it has integrated, but some way, somehow, it doesn't happen for some people. So if you realize that, to know if yours have connected integrated, when you open Microsoft Word after installation, please come to references. Once you can see these tools, you can see from this bar to bar, all the tools in between from here and then here. So insert citation, undo refresh, import bibliography, and then the reference style, okay, how to change the reference style and all that. These tools that were integrated into Microsoft Word when I installed my package. And the same with everybody. If that does not happen, when you come, you won't see this Mendeley tools, okay? Then you need to do it yourself manually. So how do you do that? You come to tools 
and then you click on install ms word that's microsoft word plug okay now you can see mine reads uninstall meaning that it's already installed it's integrated so if you go to Word and you can't see the tools by the time you get this that it says um it reads uninstall so you can to reconnect now the software the two packages can disconnect uh, after a long time of non-usage if it's for a long time they disintegrate so then you come back to reconnect it now the last time we did microsoft word i also told that sometimes when you connect it appears that it's connected but when you decide it's been, then it means that some of the components are deactivated in that case you come to file then you go to options web options okay then you go add ins add ins if you remember the last at our last session we went through that you go to add ins um, okay so once you come down here and then you pop this arrow down and see up here you have active application add-ins and amongst them i have end notes all right and i also have mendeley it means that my mendeley and add-in is active so to know if it's deactivated you come here and choose disabled items in word and you click on go now if there were some component that are disabled they would have been listed here so then you click on it and you click enable so that's that's it so if at some point <coughs> you find out that your reference manager is disintegrated or disconnected from your Microsoft Word, these are the two steps you can take. Thank you. Okay. So once that's done, now we move to site. And now as you write to site, we have already started. At site, you make sure you have your content. So normally you can and I also advise that you read in Mendeley, reading your PDF outside of Mendeley, once you upload them. Okay, so let me go to all documents. And I choose, let's see. Okay, this one doesn't come with a PDF. Uh, let me choose this okay so if i'm reading so when you open Mendeley allows you to read from it now part of the advantage is that you are able to highlight and annotate i'll show you some of the benefits of annotation in a moment so as even i find this piece instructive you easily highlight and then copy then i go back to my working file and then so this is what i want to use to battle this point i paste it here it's a verbatim quotation so i put it in inverted commas okay like that and then i want to have my quotation now if you put the quotation for the in-text citation before the quotation remember that it's only the year according to the year, that must be in bracket so i space and instead of typing manually I click on insert citation, go to Mendeley, and this is the, the piece I was reading. So then it's already selected, I click on cite. <clears throat> so that's my citation. Now it says no date, ND. These are some of the things I normally use, for example. So if it says no date, is that true? Let's see. So I've said that when that happens sometimes, you go, you open the document itself, volume 16, issue one. The date should be somewhere uh, in the content. I'm going to use this for exercise because I've always said, I've always said that it's not prudent at all. You easily give up on the dates. And because you try and don't find somebody, the date is normally once you have this data in here, the date is somewhere. So what I normally do, which we'll be doing pretty soon, is that you take the title, go to scholar, and find the date. So let's let's do that quickly. Come back to site. So I copy the title and 
then I head to my browser tab, tab. Then I go to scholar.google.com. I paste the title in here. Now you can see that the content is here. All right, then it's 2012. All right, now you come here and it may not be here. The advice is that when you get here and the date is not here, you go to cited by. So um, Google Scholar is telling us that this particular piece for which we say we don't have the date, 149 people have cited. Now it is possible that one of those found the original article. So what you do is that you click on cited by, all right? And then you go to the open one of those who have cited that work. So we have the PDF here. So we go to this particular one. So this is some of the ways you can go around finding the dates of some of the content. Sometimes what happens is that the content you were reading, the version, probably maybe a draft was released. It may be in a conference proceeding which was not dated, you know, a whole lot of things. So you find the original and then which one of the readers, uh, the, those who have cited the content may have when you open one of them like this, you go to their reference list, you scroll down to their reference list. Once you don't have the reference, it's possible that they, um, let me go and find the material. It's the identification of competencies for online teaching success. Uh, is it bigger tell? Okay. Bigger tell. So let's see. Let's scroll to B. So this is it. All right. The identification of competencies for online teaching success. All right. This is the date 2012. It's the same material. Okay. Then you can then go back to your Mendeley. This is the article only on the date area. We put it in there, 2012. So please don't just always be excited that there's no date. Now, already when we cited in Microsoft Word, it was not there. So it came, no date. Now that we have entered the date in Mendeley, remember the citations we have in text are not resident in Microsoft They are links from Mendeley. So once you correct it in Mendeley, what you do is that you click on refresh. So you see that it's corrected. Then the the date is in. Okay. So on that note, I'll say that anytime you need something, please do not, if you have to do with the, the index citation or the reference list, don't do the correction in Word. Go and correct it in Mendeley. So assuming the title was wrong, don't correct it in Word come and correct it in Mendeley, and then you get back to your working file and refresh. Okay. So that's basically up to cite. So we have just cited bigger term. Now, at instances, you also want to do multiple citation in a situation where you put up a write-up and you want to portray that more than one author agrees with you on that score based on the generality of their writing okay so in that case you so are you assuming that this is the piece i have put down okay oh uh, um let me put something tangible today i'm being lazy um it's been found out that student Project work in the University of Ghana. Has improved tremendously. Has improved tremendously. All right, due to the webinar 
series organized by Gratagon. Okay, so based on some assessment, whether in terms of reference generation and all that, maybe some supervisors have been saying that things have been improving compared to some previous times where a lot of their you know guide and instruction to students on their project where had to where the referencing that students used to have problem uh, problems with that. And then we found out that, that is changing. Now you are trying to attribute this to a series of webinars with on, on research scale by organized by Grassard. So why don't you say this and there are others who have written on it. So then this is our piece you want to battery. So you leave the mouse pointer here. The case out there, you go to insert citation. Now there are two ways. It's either you do Mendeley and then you find those authors. So as you mean, key is one of them, so I click on Dicky. Then you hold down control. Right, we are zooming that um, Derson is part. I click on, uh, we say Opoku Daniel. I click on Opoku Daniel, Rush is part. I click on it. Okay, so once I finish that, I think about four, then I click on site. All right, now I'm saying that somebody may ask about you find them. Finding them would not be difficult because you would have been reading the article, so creating them in Mendeley wouldn't be difficult. So now I've just inserted one, two, three, four. All right. So now let's go to this list. You can see that it's growing. Now remember World Bank was a third that we cited, but because the software is automating the jet, the point and sorting, you can see World Bank has moved last. All right. So these are some of the stress that, it, that are taken away from you when you adopt each of this. Okay, so that's basically how to cite. The other way of doing multiple citation is also, sorry. When you go to insert citation, you can also be searching for the authors from here. So once the dialog box appears, you can be typing, let's say, P. E, all right, as you type, the system will be sorted names closer. So, assuming this was Ivan, I'm looking for, I click on it, then I type L O something. Okay, so I have this, right? And then you click on, if you are done, you click on OK. So, that is it. All right, I've just added two. We have OK and Gideon. As for the reference list, don't waste your time because they populate. I just added copies, it's been sorted, all right? And there was Gideon, Gideon's also sorted. Okay. And then um, when you need to insert the page number, especially for verbatim questions, okay? What you do is that you can edit this, but I need to insert the page number um, in this one. What I do is that I put a comma, and let's say if it was page seven, I put it there. Sorry. Seven. Okay. So you see that once I do that, the system says the citation, bigger tell, has been manually edited. Do you want to keep this manual edit? Now, because I did it intentionally, then I keep, I click on keep manual edit, else I would have chosen on do. Okay. So now if it's at the point of inserting the citation then what you do is that once you enter i go to insert citation and then i search for let's say this once it comes you click in it all right so drifts you click in it then it pops up all right so there are other services but um i've not seen this usage in um, what do you call it in, in American Psych APA? But the page is what I do is that if it's page 10, then I put the page 10. Then I click on OK. So I've just said Dreyfus 2000, page 10. Right? So I think for seventh edition, you need to insert. Uh, so when I go there, was Dreyfus. This is Dreyfus. Uh, 
and then it's been sorted for you. So that's that's basically pretty soon and then we take the questions. I can see your hands raised. That is how to cite and populate your reference. Now, as you can see, at the very beginning, I clicked on reference and said bibliography once. That's all you do. Just once for the same project, you do it once. And then anytime you insert your reference list, you have you insert your entire citation, sorry, the reference list will be uh, published automatically for you. So, and then I also mentioned the issue of the importance of reading inside Mendeley, like clicking on articles and reading inside of Mendeley instead of um, opening them outside. So you can, so for instance, if I right click on this, you can see among the list, it's a open externally so i can open it outside of mendeley and read but when you do that you are able to, now we have said that part of the essence of using the package is to help you fast your research process so i want to show you some of the research methods that i have i know i have used so brahman for instance i know i've used in time past so you can see the moment i open this part is highlighted this is not suggested okay constructivism Construction is an ontological position, okay? Often also refers to as constructivism, all right? So you can see that these things are that I intended to come back. Now you can see all these things have been highlighted. So what this is a book is that you don't read it more than once. If you, then this is um, how many 809 page book. Now if you need to always visit those pages that we have already gone through, Anytime you need to use the book, that's time wasting. So anytime you need to quote something or you happen to quote something from them, you highlight it, okay? And if possible, annotate the portion. What happens is that if you need to reconfirm or go back to that portion, people and read, you are just looking for what you took. Assuming you posted something in there and you want to be sure if it's the same thing that's being represented in the work, what you do is that you look for highlights. You don't be scrolling through to read the book. All this that I've been saying saves you time, and then it enables you to spend the energy on its peak in writing instead of searching for materials and also pressing some um, situations. I think I'm jumping, so I'm missing some of the points. I know I've highlighted portions like um, portions in, in um, what do you call it? Uh, sample size technique and test method and all that. I have portions that I know I've highlighted. Okay, in the I do that, it makes it easier for you to also consult the book. And if you share it with somebody, you have this highlight. Also, make makes it easier for them to also uh, work through. So how do you do that? As you mean, I find this sports um, instructive. What I do is that I highlight it. Okay, and then. I click on highlight. So once I do this, this is going to remain like that. Okay. And if I want to annotate, what I do is I click on, I re highlight the spot and then I click on notes. So let's say um, to be used in methodology okay i've not used that look at the sense of all right then once you finish that's it you click so this thing will be there so anytime you get here you don't know if you can tell at instant why you highlighted if you click on the annotation now it tells you oh okay so i meant to use this so let me go and look at the linkage to see if i've done it or if i didn't do it all right all these things are fast trackers that they can use to help you work faster. Okay, so this I don't need, so I'll undo them. Okay, so I think at this point, I can say that I am done with Mendeley Desktop. So let me take some questions and then we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes on the online Mendeley Web and then we'll end the session. Thank you so much for your attention so far. Okay, so I'm going to add the hands just so I'm sure that the hands up really mean to ask questions. So, if you mean to ask a question, please raise your hand. Let me. 
Okay. So Francis, over. Yeah. Thank you so very Hello, much. Francis. Please unmute and talk. Yeah. Yes. So a quick Thank question. You. Um, um, I have seen a feature within the Mendeley which says uh, it's a web plugin. Does it do? Does it have the same feature like um, as web, a, yes. the web importer? Yes. Yes. Is it? Is it, does it have a similar feature? Like, does it do the same function as manually trying to like put in the details from the website and all that? I I just wanted to find out. And then second, so, so, so we'll do that when we go to Mendeley online. Okay. So we'll, we'll look question. at the plugin when we go online. It's actually the main reason why we're online. Okay. My second question is, I have a so yes, so, so hold on. I have a second question. I'm listening, please. So I have an existing Mendeley account, and then. Uh, when the school gave okay. us the email address, um, I tried registering with the school email address. Mm -hmm. So it unfortunately has registered a new Mendeley account. But then I need, I need, I had already started my research work with my personal uh, Mendeley account. The issue is that my Mendeley account is not as detailed or loaded as the school Mendeley accounts. I want to combine the two. Is there any way I can do that? Yes. So first of all, go to your uh, go to document on your system. Normally, Mendeley. So if I go to my document, Mendeley, that's where your the copies of your Mendeley desktop contents are housed. So if I go to document, I look for Mendeley. Mendeley's. Um, so you can see Mendeley desktop. So all the files you see in my account, this is where they are housed. So you can go to that folder and then when you find it, you can drag and drop all of them into your new account. That's one way. Okay. The other way is also to um, open the account you want to discard and then download the content. All right. So um, this way is faster. I'm looking at a way by which you can blend them because I don't know if all the old files, if you are on the system right now, I do document and see if all your content are displayed in a similar folder as I've just shown you. So I'll take you back a little. Let me take um, Kovito. Kovito, please talk to me. Yeah, please, I mean, I'm okay. The background is noisy. Okay, Yobo. Mr. Mariku Yobo, can you talk to me, please? Yo, yeah, good afternoon. All right. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, when I try... Yeah, your link is... Hello? I didn't hear you. Your, your line is breaking. What I'm saying is I try installing the mainly software but mm -hmm. what i had was the reference manager which that's the okay desktop one yes it's different from what i displayed right yes please good so the reference manager is the new version that is coming to take over from the Mendeley desktop it's been perfected yet so please don't use that you run into a lot of challenges so go back to the site. All right. Go. Okay. Go back to the site and read download. So when we are going online, I will demonstrate that. So download the Mendeley desktop instead of the reference manager. So when we are going to Mendeley online, I will, I will show you that. All right. Okay. So um, Francis.
So, Vito, can you come back? If you're ready. Yes. Hello. Okay. Uh -huh. Hello. Yes. I followed the. Yes, hello. I didn't get that. And yes, put me please work. Did you say you want it? Yes, it, it worked. It worked. I was able to um, synchronize or co um, copy the files onto one. Okay. All the files onto one. All right. Thank you so much. Okay, fine. So you are, you are that's that's great. That's great. That's great. Okay, Elvis, Elvis you can unmute and ask your question. I'll take about three more and then we'll go and we'll take the rest of the questions and then we, we end. Hello. 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 I'm waffle. Hello. Can you hear me? This is Elvis, let me hear you. Okay. Jennifer, Jennifer, please hold on. Let me finish with Elvis. I'll come back to you. Okay. It's, it's, it's been very it's been very insightful. But if you have started your work, right, and you were doing the referencing with normal mm -hmm. word referencing, regular word referencing, how can you kick it onto the Mendeley? That is one. And unfortunately, ma. My network is very, very bad. So I was unable to get it all. I was getting bits and pieces of the lecture. So is there a way I can get a full video of the lecture so that I, I can be able to download it and watch it? Thank you. Uh, so from what I know from Grassag, they, so the seminar has four sessions in them. They are hoping to compile all of them and possibly edit them and share and share them with you so I'll share the, the the videos with you okay thank you all right uh -huh. okay. and my question with uh if you've started the work on on microsoft word how you can place yes, it on yes, the yes 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 okay so on that one uh, unfortunately you have through a bit of hard work so you then have to what you need to do is that if you have the articles or even the details as you have in word upload them into mendeley then let me show by example so assuming you have this okay and you used web site so what you do is that at this spot okay you delete the reference and then you use Mendeley by in by which case you would have uploaded the sources in Mendeley. All right. So the moment you delete it, then you the case are being there, you click on insert and then you go to Mendeley to find the particular point and then you cite. So you have to do that. It's going to take time, but comparing to the word you have used if you think this is flexible then i i think it will be worth uh you know that so once you do that then from thence on you can continue your mendeley thank you okay, hello genevieve hello genevieve, please unmute and talk to me hello okay. hello please i wanted to know when you are citing especially with law students we mostly use footnotes so how does mainly help us since you can't um when you are referencing and then you use footnotes i don't know how you are going to use mainly as well um Unfortunately, I'm using that often. Okay, so what I'll do is that um, I'll do a short video on that one and share with you. Okay. 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 Thank you very much. I'll do a short video on how to do the video. Okay. Thank All right. you. Very but much. this name you are bearing is not common. Where did you get? 
<laughs> and if you, you my dad, your surname is not common, <laughs> you need to answer to me. Right? <laughs> it's from my dad. <laughs> you have to find me and answer. <laughs> I'll definitely blue for you and I come on okay. campus. <laughs> All right. So I will you'll find me at the ETA library. Okay. I will I will try and see. All right. So, um Okay, Charity, please unmute and talk to me. Thank you, Genevieve. Charity, please unmute and talk to me. Yeah, thank you very much for that lecture. Um, um, you mentioned when you do in inter citation, and uh, you start with according to. You know the the parentheses uh -huh. come after the word. You start it with how do you get that? That the parentheses come after the, the name. The, the 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 date comes after the name in parentheses in the brackets. How do you get that? Because I, I, I edited it. You, you have, have to, to edit, edit it manually. Hello. Yes. So my default. Manually. Yes, please. Okay, because I tried doing yes. that. Yes. Okay. I was by my computer did that, but it, it came. So I have yes. to add it, edit it. All right. All right. Thank you very much. So when the when you are putting the index at the end of the quotation, the both name and year has to be in bracket. So that is yes, yes, but that when is the in-text citation is before uh -huh. exactly, then you edit it a bit. All right. Thank okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right. So you're welcome. Zachariah. Ibrahim, please meet to talk to me. Okay, I think uh, that is what, uh, that was the same question she just asked, the question I wanted to ask. Um, but I, okay. I'll be very happy if, All right. if, if you, you could do a demo, if, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be happy if you could do a demonstration on how to edit it, how to edit it when um, the in-text citation is coming um, before the end of what you are trying to say. Before the quotation. Okay, so so yes, just yes. look on the screen. Yeah, just so what I'm saying is that so from here, normally people like to precede it with some uh, preamble. So when we say, for instance, in the view of, all right, then now the station has to come, right? So once the Kesa is there, in citation. I prefer going to Mendeley instead of searching. I go to Babi, all right, and I click on site. Okay, that's this. According to APA, when the author is part of the sentence or the statement, which is why we, when reading, you say in the view of Babi, but you know when it's at the end, you normally don't mention it. Okay, then here you need to take the name out. So you click. In between the first brackets like this, use your backspace to delete it. You click in front of the date, you backspace to delete the comma, you space, and then you enclose the year like this from your keyboard. You click outside. The system says the citation Barbie 2012 has been manually edited. You want to keep this manual edit or revert, blah blah blah. Okay, so manual edit, keep manual edit. That's it. <laughs> okay, I hope you're thank fine. You very much. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm okay. Now, yeah. one thing so based on your question, which is why I'll thank you again, is that when you do this, so part of the essence of the reference management is also to enable you to switch from one reference style to the other. So let's assume, let's assume you finish with your project work and you are extracting an article to publish. Maybe the publisher does not use APA, they are using um, MLA of Vancouver. So let's try switching. So we are on APA, let me switch. So we come to styles. All right, I'm going to switch to Vancouver. I like to use that because it has a clear distinction. Now you can see that this one has switched to one. There's supposed to be another here. There's two here. I don't know if you can see. Let me zoom my screen. Now Vancouver is a referencing style that uses the numbers in books. All right, so you can see this one here. This is actually the reference. And then two. So they are all supposed, to, all the in-text is supposed to change. If you go to the reference, 
you see that even the alignment has been taken out for them all the edges are equal numbered okay so when we come to the interest there were references so this reference number 10 number 11 number 12 and this one was the citation so it's telling you that the citation in here comes from six to nine and then 10 11 12 are the ones here how come this one didn't change this one didn't change and um so number f which one okay so these two didn't change all right the reason i don't do that so i won't put it to you the reason is because we manually edited them okay so if i want it to change please this thing can sometimes disturb all i do is that i click on it and then i click undo so you see that once i click on do Revert the manual edit. You see that it has changed to number three. So reference number one is here. Two is here. This is here. now four is here. Okay, this one also didn't change. So you click on it and you click undo. So that's how you revert it. In case you did some of these things and you want to revert from one reference to the other. So going back to APA, you see that all of them will be standard APA. It will not have the brackets now like I did earlier. So it means that I have to redo them. But this will only happen if you are sending it to a different recipient or publishing house that requires a different reference and stuff. Okay. Um, I'll post on the questions here and finish with the online. Some may have something to do so that we can take the rest of the hand. Thank you for now. All right. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I said the package is to be able to um attract directly from online so instead of downloading articles from let's say science direct emerald insight Bistor, and all those databases you can add them directly from the interface of the database to your mendeley account without downloading them, which also saves time meaning that once you are on those interfaces your phone you can easily add content to your account which is what i'm saying that Time to work, you already have enough content. You don't spend much of the time. Work. So, assuming you have an assignment and you need articles to work on, when you go online, you can tell articles that are useful by reading, you know, the after glancing through the content and then you add them to your account. By the time you have the time or complete the project, sourcing for information is already done. It saves time. Then, when you have concentration, after taking your favorite mail, all you do is concentrate and complete the project work. Okay, so let's go online. So to go online, if you're working with me, you need to sign in. So I'm going to sign in to my Mendeley account. Um, I need another tab. So I click on a new tab. So you go to me.com, www.mendeley.com. So this is the home page. This is the Mendeley home page. All right. Once you get here, you need to sign in. All right. But before I sign in, I think there was a member who said he had the reference manager instead of Mendeley desktop. So when you to download, Okay, so when the interface open, please do this. If you need to download, download Mendeley Desktop for Windows. If you need a Mac version of it, the Mac version of Mendeley Desktop is down here. All right, so those of you who use Mac, don't this. click on Mendeley Desktop. This is for Windows. If you have Mac, it's for Mac. And if you are using Linux, this is for Linux. Okay, please don't use um the reference manager for now all right the new mendeley reference manager it says now available why new you know so please um from my experience the uh, progress so use the desktop for now okay so that's it let me sign in um okay so sign in
Okay, so my email is already there. Sign in. Okay. So those who are sorry, seems the internet is getting a bit slower. So those who are using their private emails and are planning to switch to the institutional email. Okay, this is how you go. Let me finish with that quickly. So once you sign in to change from your email to the institutional email, now one of the advantages of doing that is that if you use your best email to create the account, your, your account doesn't get activated, in which case by using the free version. So the maximum group you can get to create and also your storage space is regulated. But if you use an institutional version, you have unlimited space, you have unlimited number of groups and, and other features. So to change your email, please, when you sign in, at the top right corner, you can see where your name appears and your picture if you have uploaded one. Then you choose settings and privacy. Okay, so settings and privacy. Once you get here, please scroll down to where your email is. So this is my email. So assuming this was not my institutional email, what I do is I delete it. And then type the one I intend to replace it with. That's it. So once I finish, if I truly intend to change, and I'll click on update. Once you click update, then a link to the email, the previous email, because the system wants to find out if you truly are the owner of the account you intend to change. Okay, so you need to first of all log in into the account. Then you put the new one, you log into that account, click on the link, accept, then the, the switch will be made for you. That's basically it. Okay. So this is Mendeley web or online. As I said, Mendeley is owned by Elsevier. So you can see the Elsevier logo here. And um, when you come in here, you also are able to search straight away from here. So this is a search box. If you click on search, it's a next to the same interface to search. When you come to groups, shows you the groups that you belong to, which are not too um, relevant for me, especially for the situation you find yourself. But some of the features that have been retired, they used to allow you to find some professors in the field and follow, but some of those features have been retired, so you don't get to anymore oh, sorry my internet is a bit slow now okay so the groups that you belong to so a few of which have been retired and then the main thing is Let me try and switch to my modem and see.
All right, so this is the interface for my Mendeley web. So this is a new interface. Those of you who use the old one, you see that this is a new interface. And this is an interface, when the Mendeley, the reference manager is perfected, this is how it's going to look like. They have finished with the web interface. They're still working with the, um, to the best of my knowledge, the last time I checked, they're still working with the desktop. So for now, this is how it will look like. So once you're here, this is your interface. And if I go to uh, recently added, I'm hoping to see some of the things we added from the desktop, unless we didn't sync. Uh, okay, let me go to. So to sync your account, what's on the desktop? This is synchronized. So you click on sync. When you click on sync, when you are saying, when we perform plan maintenance, okay. When you are saying that you are asking the system to send copies of the file you have in both interfaces to ensure that they are balanced, okay. All right, now if we, so good. So it did sync. Now you can see we created Grassack 2021 when we were on the desktop. Now I copy it online. So meaning that the content in this folder, if we did place some content in it, all of them will also be synced online. Probably they are not coming. Okay, we also created a group, I remember. Created a Grassack research group. Was on the desktop. Where are you? Yeah, this is it, Grassack Ligon Research. So it's also here. All right, so it will sync. Uh -huh. So you see that these are the content we put in it whilst we're on the desktop. I did not upload this now. So this is what enables the device dependency. So meaning that if I were signing in onto a different machine or together somewhere else, I still have my content to work with. All right, so if you go to all references, so on the desktop, remember it's all documents. Yes, all references, the same thing. So this is what we added, rethinking debt, financing the future amid crisis. This is what we got from the World Bank website a few moments ago. Okay, so it means that you don't need to be on the same machine to get your content or sources to site. Now let's move into the most important reason why we came here, which is the Mendeley Web Importer. <clears throat> now the Web Importer, as one of our members asked, is a tool that enables you to attract a source, an article, an ebook from the web page or from a database directly into your account without downloading them. And to use it, you need to install it. So let me demonstrate first. <clears throat> so I'm going to sciencedirect.com. No. Okay, so as I'm here, so let's say I search for law in the twenty first century. All right. So these are the sources the system is giving me. Now you can see that because I switched to my modem, uh, it's not giving me chance to get the PDFs. So please beware, when you are using your modem, before I can get them, I need to log in to my off-campus account, all right? Because I have not done that yet, so you can see that these ones, I don't have the PDF. The one that you see the PDF attached, it says full text access. All right, so meaning that this is a free article anyway. What's in a name? Okay, so this is even not too related to what I said. So some of these, I have them. So what happens is that if I want to attract some of the content that I have, normally I would have had to download them. By using the web importer, all I need to do 
is to where's mine? So my web importer is here under my plugins or add-ins. So I click on it. So once you search and the results are displaying on the Science Direct or if it's Google Scholar or whichever page you're using, all right, then you click on the web importer. So this is my Mendeley web importer. So I click on it. Then it's going to attract all the content of the page. Okay, it's asking me to sign in. I consent to the use of this. Okay, so I sign in. It's going to attract the content of the page. And then you, you choose or select the ones that you want and upload them. Oh, internet's not helping me. No, no, no. So it's been, um, okay, let me refresh it. Oh. Just a moment, please.
Hello, Mr. Mr. Eric, you've muted your microphone. Oh, no. Oh. So you're not hearing me all this while? Yes, so. That's too bad, that's too bad, that's too bad. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry about that. Okay, so I was demonstrating how to use the web importer, but now that I've taken mine off, we need to install it. So to install the web importer, I'm saying that when you sign in, so we are looking at how to attract articles and ebooks directly into Mendeley without having to download them. And the advantage here is that once you learn to use it, then you can even do it on your phones and your tablets. It saves you the time of having to sit and look for materials when you would have used the same energy to, I mean, write a paper. So when you are you sign in, so this is my interface. You scroll down, especially at the home page. You scroll down, then you find web importer. So I click on web importer. Click on web importer and then it says get web importer for Chrome. Okay. Because I'm using Chrome, it picked my browser straight away. So I go this way. And then I click on add to Chrome. Now it's asking me to add it, permits the addition. So I say add extension. So if you are using Mozilla, the, the maneuvering may be a bit different, but then the instructions are similar. So you follow through to the end. Now, once it's done, you see the pop-up indicating that you've been able to do it. And you normally see it around the add-ins here. I have a lot of them, that's why. You normally see the add-ins somewhere here. So you can see it says checking, still checking. When it's ready, we'll, we'll have it added. So as it's adding, i move to this browser. Okay, so it's done. All right, so Mendeley Web Importer has been added to Chrome. So to find it, I get it from here. So I'm saying that to use it, you go into a database of your choice. So in this case, let me switch and go to Google Scholar. So I go to Scholar again. So in Google Scholar, I say business financing the face of COVID-19. Okay. So once you have your results, apparently some will come with a PDF, some may not. Instead of looking, reading through and downloading them, all right, what you do is that you click on the web importer straight away. So this is my web importer. So I click on it. It's asking me to consent, so I click to do so, and it's reading. So it's going to capture the content. I did earlier one with Science Direct. I'm trying with Google Scholar. It works on all the other data, but in some instances, you do it and it's not working. Please, this are uh, to make life easier. So you go and open them one after the other and uh, you download them. I'll try with JSTOR so we see how that one also works. Okay, so it's been able to capture. Now you can see that I have this financing and entrepreneurship in times of crisis, exploring the impact of COVID. So if I like this, then I check markets, okay? This one to comes with the PDF, mental health policy in the era of COVID. If I want this, I check market, okay? Then I'm also saying that some of the advantages that it, does, it doesn't just help you to attract them, it enables you to also direct them to a particular folder as you have created them. So up here, 
I pop this arrow down and move to groups and locate the grasser group that I created. All right, um, where is it? This is it, grasser Gligon research. All right, once I do that, then I I've selected two, so I click on add. So it's, it's working, you can see adding. Selected two, so this is the first one adding. The second one is also adding. When it's done, you see the check mark indicating that the document has been sent. So check mark, that's PDF check, reference check, PDF check, reference check. So how do we ascertain if they were truly sent? So once we come here, remember this page has been idle for some time. So you refresh. Don't sit when the page has been idle and think the system didn't work. You just refresh it and then the files will come. And also to get it to the desktop, you activate your Mendeley desktop and then you click on synchronize. So all this you do as you work, you do as you work, you do as you work. So it becomes easier. Okay, so where are you? Okay, so let me go into the Grassack group folder. So that's it, mental health policy in the era of COVID. Financing entrepreneurship, blah, blah, so that's it, it's in. If you go to desktop, it should have started coming. Um, so it's reading from down here, you can see it's a bit slow, they'll come. So basically that is how to install and use the web importer. But in some instances, I have another meeting. In some instances, let's say jstore.com, when you do it, it sometimes comes with some challenges. Sometimes some of the bibliographic data items may not be extracted. So please open and then type them in, just like we did with a file that had no date. Open the article, look at it, type them there. And then one other thing that I may probably have forgotten to share with you is how to use um, DOI, Digital Object Identifiers. Okay, so let me click on this article to see if it will open and then I'll share that with you quickly. If it has one, that is. So the Digital Object Identifiers um also serve as url so if you find an article that has a data object identifier please it's better you use that than uh, using the url so where is it let me see this one i don't think it's that obvious okay so let me just demonstrate that in mendeley so once I click on this, let me see. Yes, it does have. So if I have this, all right, if assuming I didn't have this article and I wanted this, so when we're doing the add entry manually, let's assume later you found the bibliographic data of the material. So instead of filling, so it's a general article, instead of filling this to use it, because I have the DOI, I can simply paste it in here. All right, without filling the rest, and then I click on look up. So the system street, I will go online and fetch the details. And so you can see I have them. All this I didn't type in. Okay, so that's how you can use DOI. So DOIs are more preferable these days than URLs. So if you use an online article and in the reference list, instead of the URL, you can put the DOI if it's available. Okay, that's that's about it. Um, please, I have another meeting. So let me take some questions and then we'll bring the session to a close. Thank you for your attention so far. Uh, Mr. Andrisa, can you help me moderate the questioning session? This you can ask a question. Mr. Francis, Tiflos. Hello. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me?
Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you, please. Okay, let me see. If you have a question, just raise up your hand. Let me see. So if you like, drop all the hands so that yeah. um, those who still intend to ask a question, they will raise them again. Sika? Yes, uh, I want to find out. Mr. Ambassador, I said that uh, when you go to documents, you should be able to see the Mendeley folder with all the documents you have in it. But when I go there, I don't see that. Yes. That I don't see that. Have, have you been using it for long? Yes, please. Since our last, the last time you, you taught us about this. Okay. So, so you don't see a folder in your document Name. that is labeled Mendeley Desktop? No, please. Please try and browse other locations on your system because that is it keeps um, the desktop the content in the desktop account on your machine so it should be somewhere by default it's normally in my document okay so please browse that and and, and let's see secondly ne always, next question is it always uh, compulsory to add the uh, doi to a document or the url to a document for referencing Oh, not necessarily, not necessarily. Especially when you have, or, so you see the article that we didn't have the date, for instance. There are instances where you don't have enough bibliographic data about the article. So in that case, when you have the DOI, it's, it's very important. So the DOI is just like your student ID. They are only designed and assigned to particular documents. All right, they are not repeated, so they serve as a target. So just like earlier when I was saying that URLs, um, content gets archived, they sometimes get taken down. As for DOI, assuming we found an article in Science Direct today, and next week is taken down from Science Direct, but the article is in Emerald Insight. When you type the DOI, because it is directly related to that article, it will take you to Emerald Insight, even though previously you found it in Science Direct. So it's a very important bibliographic data. If it's available, you put it. It's, okay, it's you. It, you know, putting references is not just for you to complete. It also helps readers to further expand on the knowledge you are sharing with them by reading the references that you add. Okay, next question, please. Hello, sir. Next. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Thank Good afternoon, sir. That was very insightful. You're welcome. So, you asked that um, there was some um, buttons I saw on the Mendeley desk desktop. Can you please go go on to the Mendeley desktop? The, there were what? I wanted to find out about some icons I saw on Mendeley. I didn't get it. Some icons on the Mendeley desktop. So you want me to show mine? Yes, please. Okay, so my desktop is showing. Which, which ones? Um, I can't see it on my screen. Yes, the the green the green. Icon. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it now. Thank you. The green and the star buttons. What are they used for? And then. Okay. Um, and then this I one. The no, no. Um, just the star there. button. The authors. Hello. Yeah, uh, okay. um, these ones. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, so if I go to favorites now, so this is what they are used for. So you can see this article. It says fire and fury inside the White House. All right. If you look at this one, I say the theory and practice of online learning. This one says, they say, I say, the movies that matter, the moves that matter in academic writing. So this, out of the many articles that I have, these ones I have made favorite. The intended that when I have time, I will look at them fully. 
So when you you have the content, there are some that if you think they are articles, like maybe like books, novels that you had in your account that you intend to read, you can make them favorite so that anytime you click on favorite, they will they will all be listed. That that that's basically it. And then how about the green one? So you start them to make them favorites. Thank you. Next question. The, oh, okay, so the ones that you have read, so you see because I have clicked on this one, this one is inactive, say mark as unread. So when you add them are new and you have not opened them, then it is green. When you read them, then it gets this way. See, this one is inactive. Okay. So they are used to mark articles as read or unread. So if you want to show that, uh-huh. Final question, and I wanted to know if you have only one in-text citation, can you still generate the bibliography or reference list? Of course, of course. So once you click on insert bibliography, whether it's one or hundred, all of them will come. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, hello, sir. Next question, please. Yes, sir. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, please. My problem is about when you are inserting the, the, the I mean, the citation. As, assuming you have already, I mean, inserted the whole okay. at, at the end, then, then you now you are trying to insert another one in your way document. But when you do that, it will intend it will bring the whole bibliography to, to that document again, making it double double bibliography. How how do you solve that problem? No, it will not double it. They, it never get doubled. The only way that will happen is if you have manually typed one in there already. Even in that case, the one you manually type will be separated. It will not be involved in the sorting. Normally, it's only one. And also, try and look at your content very well. You know, if an author wrote um, twice, all right, let's say the same year, normally in the listing, so you have A and B. So check it very well and be sure they are the same thing. I, actually, what I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, I assume you are, you are, you are doing your, your chapter one. Then after that, you, have, you, you, I mean, you show all the people at the end. Now, when you are trying to reference something again in that chapter one, your, your whole reference at, at the end will appear again. It, it, it will appear where? It will appear at where you kept your case. Yes, but if it's the same content, if it's the same article or book, it will not repeat. Let's say you have cited, you have cited Anderson in chapter one, and then in chapter two as well, you found some other page in Anderson that you think was useful and you quoted again. You, it is the in-text that will come but the reference list will only be one because it's the same author and the same source. Okay. Unless I'm not getting what you're saying. So maybe we need to arrange a meeting and then uh, I look at it properly. Okay, no problem. Ne next question, please. Sir. Yes, oh, ma'am. Please, how can we arrange Yes, madam. How can I arrange a meeting with me? Yes, you just said so. Um, yeah. <laughs> that one is a bit difficult, but a lot of your colleagues have been sending me. So let me put my, I normally put my number so that you can send me a WhatsApp. I am at the RIPS library, but as I speak with you, I'm on a committee, we are going for a meeting. So I'm moving to the great hall immediately after this. I'm already even late. It's having two o'clock. So if you are coming now, you will meet me. But if you send me a WhatsApp after that meeting, I will I will respond. So I'll put my details in the uh, chat right now. I'm doing that right away. Yes, we can take more questions. Okay. So let me put my details in here. The name you already know, but Hi, 
Okay, so and I am at the is a rips library. So if you, you come to computer science, you find me, but sometimes meetings and other assignments. As I'm talking to you, I'm, I moved away from the library. I'm in the ESA conference room. So if you happen to be there looking for me, you won't find me. So, and I do this a lot, so pardon me. So if you need anything at all, send me a WhatsApp. Please don't do how are you and all those things. It's time wasting. So hello, my name is. Then you put, you continue with the message. Some will normally type hi and they wait for you for five years to say hi before they put the query. Just type Please, what you need the help on straight where, away. Please say I can't see where you put your name or number on my screen. Is it on the chat section? I, 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 it's, I put it in there. Yes, in the chat session, please. And it's showing on the yeah. screen. On the screen. We, we can't see it. We can't see Hello. it, sir. I've just said hi on the plus platform, really? but we haven't seen what, okay, it has just come. Thank you. I, am, I can see your hi. How come you can't see my details? It has, it has just come. It has come now, sir. So Grasak has reposted it. You still can't see. Great, great, great. Okay, so um, moderator, I I may have to leave now. The chairman of the committee is calling. I have to rush. Um, so sorry, today I have to run out on you like this. But, uh, we thank you very much. So thank you for your attention, and um, see you next week. Thank okay, you. So colleagues, All right. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Bye bye. Okay. We appreciate the support and everything. So please, if you have any question, as he said, you have his contacts and you can contact. Bye-bye. Have a nice day.